Wow. So this is a first. Um, I'm here with a electric drill because I'm going to start opening and hopefully this doesn't take forever. And if it does, it's going to have to be a time-lapse video. But this is the latest drop-off in the Rogers Music Tour journey. Um, I am a member of multiple websites. I'm a member of multiple uh, collecting clubs, Facebook groups, etc. And about once a quarter, these companies have their big music auction. And a couple months ago, there was one through a website I go to called Julian's Auctions. And they had one for Music Cares, which was stuff that they had some very rare pieces where artists donated multiple pieces that were one of a kind. Um, when all the money went to charity. In here could be one of multiple things, but I'm pretty sure I know of at least one item in here. And that is from a singer slash guitar player, not just any guitar, the bass guitar, which is the rhythm of the band, the bass of the drums, or the rhythm of the band. It's normally the, the, quiet, the quiet rock star, unless you're someone like Flea, who's the bassist for the Red Hot Chili Peppers, or maybe you're the bassist for the band, a guy named Rick Danko, another one of my favorite bassists. I hope this drama and the anticipation is killing you because it's killing me. Because I think what's in here is something from one of the greatest bands of all time. They were part of the British invasion. And I'm confident that the closest thing America's had to this group who I'm going to save until the very last second, it could be an hour from now, but the closest thing we've had is Guns N' Roses. Even though Guns N' Roses kind of came and went in large part because of their partying habits. And fun fact, Steven Adler, who was the drummer for Guns N' Roses, was really their drummer only on their very first album, which was Appetite for Destruction. Steven Adler got kicked out of Guns N' Roses for alcohol and drug abuse. Imagine being the guy that literally got kicked out of probably the hardest partying group in the history of music for alcohol and drug problems. Anyway, here we go. We're opening right now. And again, imagine every Christmas morning you had as a child from like age four until whenever things change with Santa Claus. And then the feeling you get when you come down those stairs and you see something, because ladies and gentlemen, what this is in here, so securely packed, so thank you to the packing company that did this. This is the very first amplifier used by Bill Wyman. Who's Bill Wyman, you say? Well, Bill Wyman was the basis for the Rolling Stones from 1962 until around 1980. They didn't announce that he had left the group until around 1983 because they had a hiatus, but this right here is history. If you'll come over here with me, you can see the bottom of it right here. It's really hard to get out of here, and this thing is heavy as hell. But like most collectors, I didn't just buy one piece. I bought multiple. So Bill Wyman's amplifier from one of the very first Rolling Stones concerts ever. The Rolling Stones, probably the most successful rocker of all time, right alongside maybe Led Zeppelin. And that's what I was referring to with the Guns N' Roses reference, where they kind of created a genre of their own. It was kind of like a soulful rock and roll, right? And it was Britain's answer to a poppy, four-headed monster that were clean-cut with bull haircuts wearing suits called the Beatles. But in here, we also have some other pieces where I'm not even sure what this is, but... I'm going to have you stay with me, and in the meantime, you and I will both guess um, 
because this could be something that I forgot I ordered, and it is. Now this is awesome, and I actually literally forgot that I got this. My favorite soul group of all time is The Temptations. One of The Temptations' best songs, one of their greatest songs ever, is called Get Ready, Cause Here I Come. If you want to play hide and seek with me, let me remind you, it's all right. These are the original lyrics to get ready. This is insane. And I literally forgot that I bought it because this is from such a long time ago. Um, it's well preserved. You can see it's all written um, in ink. And this is something I'm going to have to soak in later. I can't say off the top of my head who the lyricist was. I think his name was like Brad um, or Bert. And these are the original lyrics that went on to be a legendary Motown song by the marvelous Temptations. We got more stuff in here, by the way. Here's another box. What's in here? Your guess, again, as good as mine. But we're gonna continue with the reveal. By the way, for all y'all watching, this is literally the first time I'm seeing this as well. But you'll appreciate when an auction company sends you something that's been packaged, it is packaged with ever-loving care. You'll notice things too, it's crazy. Like even when they go and package with tape, they close it off at the top just so it's easy to peel off. So you don't even have to dig in there with your fingernails or your lack thereof. It's so simple, it's like opening a, a box of pizza and instead of smelling the cheese and the pepperoni, you smell the deal. So rap music. I love rap music. I also love Disney. I love Disney TV. I love Disney movies. Um, and I believe one of the only crossover Disney stars to go from Disney to music, but not just any music, but rap, because now you're thinking about Justin Timberlake, Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, Frankie Avalon, Annette Vucicelli, or however you say her name for the Mickey Mouse Club. But there was a guy on a show called Degrassi. You know what his name was? Drake. Drake wrote a song at the beginning of his career. And these are the handwritten lyrics. That's pretty cool. Right? And that also just shows I'm genre diverse. We've got Motown. We've got classic rock. And now we have Drake handwritten lyrics on a spiral notebook that he probably did this while he was getting homeschooled while a Disney star. But you know what they say on infomercials, but wait, there's more. Come with me. Again, here we are opening another package where this is something that I don't know what it is either, but we're going to go and experience the reveal together. And by the way, if you pan down, you'll notice a new pair of shoes like that, which I'm not allowed in public in these, but they're pretty fun. Vans. All right, I know what this is. I'm going to let you all peek through this. You can see the sparkles. You can see how well preserved this is. One of my buddies and one of my favorite musicians of all time is Miranda Lambert. Miranda Lambert is from East Texas, Lindale to be specific. Uh, she's won more ACMs than any artist in history, whether male, female, duo, group, singer, songwriter, whatever. Miranda Lambert's very first ACM performance, she was wearing this dress. This dress, that's crazy. So you can kind of get a little close, but I'm not going to take it out for all sorts of reasons, the biggest of which is my wife is going to ask me, why did you buy a woman's dress? And I'm going to say, it's not just any woman, it's Miranda Lambert. And then she's going to say, why did you buy Miranda Lambert's dress? And I'm going to say, honey, you look beautiful. And I'm going to change the subject because that's what a true salesperson does. They divert. So one more look at the true treasure of this chest that I do not know how I'm going to get. Oh, you know what? Here's how I'm going to get it out. There's more screws, of course. Just come with me. If you're still watching this, y'all, maybe, maybe this would be a good time for a commercial break. Maybe this would be a good time for uh, a bathroom break. Because I think I have another 20 minutes of dealing with this. But one more look inside. This here, so well secured, unfortunately, 
is one of the very first amps ever used at a Rolling Stones concert. Of course, Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, of course, Grammy winners, of course, absolute legends of their time. And Keith Richards, if you're watching this, what is your secret? So anyway, this is the latest archaeological, uh, this is the latest uncovery uh, for Rogers Music Tour. Continue to follow us, follow my journey, follow my team as we look for the coolest pieces of music memorabilia all over the world. And the biggest difference between me and every other collector is everything I have, none of it is for sale. Reach out to us, send us a DM, follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Rogers Music Tour. Thanks for watching and thanks to my camera woman for being so patient and for not making fun of me for my outfit. Cheers.